What's going on, Plan Army? Jacob here, and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. Today I wanted to take the time to show you guys how to make this really cool looking 3D text effect in Photoshop CS6 Extended. So you can see it here, I have it all set up, and this is the final product that I'll be teaching, teaching you guys how to do. I'm going to make this a two-part video. The first part will be how to set up the actual 3D text, and then you guys will render it, and then come back for the second part of the video where we'll make embellishments to make this look really cool and kind of glowy as you can see. Now make sure if you're going to be watching this tutorial that you have CS6 extended because otherwise you can't use 3D options. I know uh, when I first started Photoshop I did not know that extended had 3D and um, normal CS6 did not. Alright so with that let's just, let's just jump right into this. Alright so what I started with was basically this. Really simple. You just type in all the letters of your whatever you're going to be typing in your name, your YouTube channel. But uh, for this, I went to File, New. I named it 3D Autotroph Backup because this is my backup when I was making my other one because I wanted to make sure I kept these letters in case I needed them, which I recommend you guys do. And I'll probably have to do it in this video too. You can name it what you want. We're going to be using 1920 by 1080 and uh, 150 pixels per inch because we want really high quality stuff. Alright, so go ahead and do that and then type in all the letters separately on different letter or different layers of your name or channel name whatever it is and make sure you're doing this that you're typing each letter with the color that you're gonna actually want the letter later it makes it a lot easier so if you wanted it green then you can have green here but say you were gonna have all of your letters be blue you can have it be this you can mess around with the colors and um, you guys might notice I already have these gradients set up. Don't worry about that yet. I'll, I'll show you that in a few seconds. But um, make sure that you have your correct color selected. And then we can continue on how to create this little gradient. For now, I don't have a background. But you can see in the final I do because we'll be adding that in part two because that doesn't really matter right now. All right, so for the blending options that I added to make this text look a bit better, which really helps in the final product over there, is I first added a gradient overlay. Change the blend mode to soft light. Make sure the opacity is at 100 and just use a basic black to white gradient. And you can find that up here. Click OK and the angle should already be at 90, the scale should be at 100 and the style is linear. And that should be good. And then when you, uh, oops, sorry, I forgot the uh, inner glow. So you're also going to want to add an inner glow. Change it to linear dodge for your blend mode. 20% opacity, 10% noise, and you're going to want a white inner glow. I know you might not really be able to distinguish it against the background right now, but it does make a difference. Um, you want, you're going to want to keep it on softer, edge, 0% choke, 45 pixel size, and this should already be set up like this, 50% range, the contour is just straight. You don't really have to mess with this. Alright, so then that's good. And then you'll have only the A like that if you were doing mine, and you wouldn't have all this. So if you want to, to apply that to every single one of your layers, right-click on the letter that you started with and go to Copy Layer Style right here. And then you can uh, shift-click up here, and you have all of them selected. Right-click and click Paste Layer Style, and that copies the layer style on all of them, so then you'll have all the text like I do. And you notice that this isn't straight because I kind of wanted to get a feel for how I'm going to be arranging my letters when I actually go into something like this. So they're, they're kind of arranged like that. I move them around in the end, but get a basic idea. All right, so here's where the 3D is about to start. Save a backup of this now if you're going to save a backup, which I definitely will. Um, we'll name this the backup backup because this is already my backup. Uh, and we'll be using this for the rest of the tutorial. Alright, so now I wanted you to create this backup because there's no real turning back, I don't think, after you rasterize your layers, because that's what you're going to be doing. Uh, select all of your text, right click, rasterize layer style. And this creates, it, it gets basically all of the pixels of your letter, and that's it. You can see that it's transparent here on the sidebar now, next to your letters, like their background's transparent. And that's key for 3D editing. All right, so click on your first letter now. 
um, you can just click on like the eyeball of this one and drag it up turn off all the rest of the letters because we just want this one for now and click 3d at the top new 3d extrusion from selected layer and hit yes when it prompts you to ask if you want to work in the 3d workspace all right so now it should look something like this and with these tools up here this is the orbit tool I think uh, it lets you okay it lets you rotate around like this but I'm gonna hit control Z I didn't want that you should have well first we'll adjust your current view we want this ground plane to be just below the camera because that really does matter your text has to be above that so that it can cast shadows onto the ground so to do that we're gonna have the current view and just slide this down a little bit about there that looks good so now you can click on your A on the uh, 3D panel on the right side and you can see all this stuff. Now you can slide it up and down with this and you can see that there's a shadow there. And you can definitely add some roll like this. Uh, we'll slide it up here. All right, so say that's where I wanted my A. Then we can just leave it there and I'll show you guys what you're basically gonna be doing to every single letter you're going to want to go to extrusion depth it should be open in your mesh thing up here under properties and crank that up all the way to the top 2500 now go to your uh, I'm gonna do this first go to your cap and change the strength to 5% you can see that adds a little bit of a bubble to the text it makes it look a lot smoother and it makes the edges not look all pixelated it just comes out as a really nice final effect as you can see here the letters just look kinda smooth and bubbly like that all right so now go back to our uh, well you were here in cap go to deform and you're gonna wanna see you can you can edit the extrusion depth from here too you don't have to go back to your mesh settings uh, turn the taper down to zero percent which will make it not taper like or, or it will completely taper I guess it tapers down to one point and then depending on which way you want it to twist grab this and select or uh, drag the bar so I'll have it like maybe I'll have it twist this way I guess yeah and then to create these little like spirally upwards curl things like I've done you can definitely mess around with the extrusion depth and the twist and the effects that has on it but the horizontal angle and vertical angle are going to be able to control which way it points so if I drag it this way then it'll start moving down I kinda want it to be up like this but if we drag the vertical angle I know it sounds a little backwards because the vertical angle is kinda moving it on the horizontal axis I guess but um there if I want it to go out the camera at the corner like that there we go that looks pretty good for our first letter uh, now we want to go to our a extrusion material down here click here and you can choose from uh, a bunch of these different materials the ones that look the best are the first one um, this one it gives a nice little um, metal like texture I think I also used this one in a different project I was doing it looks cool because there's holes and you can actually see through um, this one yeah, it's I don't really like that one as much but this one's also great and you can use the checker that comes out pretty cool sometimes and definitely this marble texture um, I'll just select the marble texture for this one and if you want to you can change the color of the marble or whatever your material is by clicking on the diffuse and then changing it but since this is a marble thing it'll stay basically the same unless I change all these settings but marble you're probably just gonna want as marble anyways but I'm pretty sure it's ambient that changes it here no nope. uh, it was illuminate yeah illumination changes it if you're gonna use marble like I am but I like to keep the normal marble look now I like to bring the shine a hundred percent up and bring the reflection a hundred percent up which will look really cool in the final product 
So you can see here, like the shines on these figures over here, I have these all on 100%. So you can see like the other shapes, like this little A over here, you can see the reflection of the U and things like that. It just looks really nice with the shine and reflection. All right, so that basically wraps it up for our first letter. So now you can go back to your layers panel here, turn your U back on, you can drag it back here. So you have to first make your letter U, you have to go to 3D and make it a new 3D extrusion first before you hit the control E. So sorry about that, I just, I messed up back there. I probably cut that out, but uh, yeah, I totally didn't mess up, whatever. Um, now you can hit control E and it adds it onto the same plane as your letter A. And from here you can edit it and basically do the exact same thing you did with the letter A, but um, mix things up, rotate it around, and do different things. So basically, um, you just need to get that whole thing done so it looks something like this over here. Um, it'll look like this except it won't look as smooth. It definitely won't look as smooth because you haven't rendered out the shadows yet. So in a sec, I'm going to get, um, I'm going to fix mine up so that I can actually start rendering it. So I'll be on the stage, same stage as you. I'll be right back in a sec. All right, so now I'm caught up with you guys. I have exactly what you have. You can see it doesn't look as smooth as my final product did before. So uh, you can see it, yeah, it just doesn't look as good. The, the shadows definitely aren't as soft. So these layers on the side, just ignore those for now. Those are going to be um, in part two so that you can make your um, text look really glowy and just smooth like mine did. All right. But before you render this out, you have to make this gradient background like I did. So to do that, I just went into the blending options of my background, went to gradient overlay, chose my colors. You want to make it kind of subtle, just enough so that you can see it. Uh, the scale should still be 100. You, sh you should change the style to, uh, it's, sh it's probably going to be on linear to begin with, but it should be on radial, and you should change the angle from, I'm guessing it's probably 90 for you right now, you should change it to, back to zero. Alright, so now that you have that, you should go over, um, I'll click this first and you'll be back in your 3D layer. All right, before you're going to go to render this to use it in your final product, you want to go into your 3D layer, which should be open here with all of your text layers, and click Infinite Light. It's just going to be your light that casts on your text. And crank up the shadows to 100% if you want it to look really good. And why I mean if you want it to look really good is because if you don't have a, a computer that has really good processing power, then you can't do this really. I mean, you can, but you're going to have to wait a really, really long time. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you can lower it if you want. It won't have too much of an impact on your um, composition. But if you keep it really high, it'll look really nice. And click here, this little box with the cube in it, to begin your render. And once your render has finished, which it might take a while, just keep that in mind. It's not broken. It'll just take a really long time. Um, come back and see part two where we're going to add embellishments onto the text to make it look good.